Hello and welcome to another edition of Some Arts where I am happy to be joined with Denise Provost. How are you doing, Denise? I'm, I'm doing great. How are you, Dave? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, and we are here to talk about um, Denise's new book of poetry, Curious Peach. Um, and I'd like to read some blurbs from the back, sure. if, I, if I might, because they're very impressive. Um, Lloyd Schwartz, uh, who was in this set a few weeks ago with Doug Holder, uh, who is the Poet Laureate of Somerville, says, Denise Provost's nature poems so elegant and deftly turned, both formal and formally inventive, unsentimental yet full of feeling, breathe the wisdom that comes from careful observation, not only of nature, but of human nature. Um, so that's, that's such a great blurb. <laughs> and um, I'd like to know about your process and how you came to, to write poetry. Um, I've been writing poetry since I could write. And before that, I used to make things up, often alternative lyrics to songs. Um, so I write about everything. And um, I like being outside, even if it's walking down the street or on the path. Um, so, so I just record um, impressions mm -hmm. of not every single day, but of a lot of days and a lot of um, experiences. And at one point, I thought that there were th that there were enough poems of a certain kind that I could put them together as a book that followed the full cycle of the year. And so it, it, that is Curious Peach? That is Curious Peach. I, I was wondering about that because as I was reading, I did follow the cycle mm -hmm. of seasons. And so, uh, yeah, it's great to know yeah. that that was the intention behind it, the, the book. It was indeed the intention. And then the last poem, the capstone poem, mm. um, does the whole cycle of the year in one poem. And so the, um, the nature poems that Lloyd Schwartz refers to, um, that, that he also describes as, uh, um, that he implies that may have sentimental. Um, I think he said unsentimental. Yeah, yes, yes. He said unsentimental, referring to your work. But does that mean that the nature poem is known for sentimentality? I think it, I think it, may have been at certain times. I think of Wordsworth in the 19th century, um, who often strays into that territory. Um, but Wordsworth and Coleridge were friends. Mm -hmm. And they made a pact, actually, um, about poetic experimentation, that Wordsworth would write about ordinary things as if they were extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And Coleridge would write about extraordinary things as if they were ordinary. And I think um, that Wordsworth's endeavor of making the ordinary sound extraordinary uh, can result in some overblown effects. Mm -hmm. And so how did, how did that, um, knowing that, like how did you bring that into your, pr your process. Well, I, I kind of sidestepped it mm -hmm. um, and went back to the 17th century. Um, this, this title, which so many people find um, interesting and remarkable, is actually pulled out of a text um, of a poem by Andrew Marvel mm -hmm. called The Garden, a long poem, uh, because the, the 17th century poets, the, the metaphysicals, were um, crisply unsentimental. Um, although they, they mined nature um, and everything else for, for metaphor um, and, and imagery. And, and Marvel is actually um, among my favorite poets, and I reread his poetry so much that you know I can be outside and and I will I will think of one of his lyrics, and um, the the lyric that gave rise to the title 
starts off, um, Oh, what a life in this I lead. Ripe apples fall about my head. The, the, the luscious clusters of the vine upon my mouth do press their wine. The nectarine and curious peach into my hands themselves do reach, stumbling on melons as I pass, and snared with flowers, I fall on grass. Um, which, which I think is uh, a delightful um, lyric and, and so full of strange and suggestive imagery. I mean, the, the, the man is practically mugged by delicious ripe fruit. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and it's, it's full of illusion. Um, you know, he was, he was the son of a, a minister, and I think he was probably trained for the clergy himself, though he never became a clergyman. He was certainly educated, but the idea of, of the ripe apples and, and falling uh, certainly allude to, to the, the temptation and fall of man. Um, and, and yet it's, it's, it's beautiful and, um, you know, voluptuous mm -hmm. and um, clever. And it's all in rhyme couplets, mm. and w which was the thing in the middle of the 17th century. So, um, so that was the that was the the spirit that I was striving for. Um, and I like to write in form, mm -hmm. um, and certainly there are only two poems in the book that are in rhymed couplets. It's hard to do rhymed couplets without having them sound forced or artificial mm -hmm. to 20th or 21st century ears. Um, but I do write a lot of sonnets, um, which is sort of an homage to Keats, whose nature poetry is actually very beautiful, even though, um, you know, much, much later in time. Mm. I, I think I get a sense of returning to the unsentimental yeah. description um, because as I was reading the poems, the the actual human and human concerns are very like not not the concerns of your poem. They're they're more um, observations about nature and kind of letting those observations tell. Uh, weave weave a story and weave weave mm -hmm. a metaphor. Yeah. Um, so I I understand that, and um, I'm curious to know what what you think about that observation of mine. <laughs> well, well, I like to be understated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm always telling stories, um, but it may it may take some thinking or a rereading or two for for the story to emerge mm -hmm. um, as is the case with a lot of poetry as is yeah. the, yes yes and and you know poetry i i've i've appreciated even more um as as i've gone through my life because it's the most concentrated form of writing um, you know, yes, yesterday I, I had a deadline from the Boston Globe and they wanted 350 words. And of poetry? No, 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 no. This is, you know, this is expository writing. And so I started off I, as a template. I used it, something I'd written on the same subject that was over 900 words. You know, not overly long, but detailed. And my next draft was 600 and some words. Um, and at that point, I knew I had to edit it as if I were writing poetry, which was to concentrate it and bring it down to its essence. And the more I write poetry, the better my prose becomes. And I think that the sharper my thinking becomes, be because I'm forced to be concise. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few of the pages um, 
in your book dog-eared because okay. I, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about um, some of the the poems, some of the imagery that I came across. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a, a couple of poems that are, are paired on a spread here. One's called Predation, and then the other's called Water Chestnut Pool, Mystic River. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is the imagery with both these poems, the uh, they kind of end in very interesting, unexpected places. Uh, predation is about a robin that visits the the uh, observer, and and then it ends with um, observations about the cat that killed the robin, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, which is a, a little morbid, but um, but it's all possibly, but it's mm -hmm. also part of of um, the the view of nature that you take, which mm -hmm. is one of. Uh, renewal and the anticipation of the season and then the season in its glory and then maybe the season overstayed its welcome mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the anticipation for the next season. Oh, what, a, what an astute reader you are, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, y yes, because that's, that's such a, that's, that's such a, an interesting human experience, um, I think. And you know, other other poets have noted it too. There's a, a poem by Robert Frost about harvesting apples um, that talks about, and I don't think I can come up with exactly the right language. What is it uh, about how how we've we, we've we've come to tire of the harvest that we so desired, or something like that? That's those aren't the exact words, but it's a it's a beautiful and thoughtful poem. Um, you know, Frost, I love Frost, too. Uh, although Frost does, does not motivate me, some of the other, uh, the way some other poets do. But I really enjoy reading Frost. And then the, the other poem that I was um, referring to, um, which is Water Chestnut Pool, Mystic mm -hmm. River, which is really, I've, I've been on the Mystic River yep. on, on a canoe, so like I, I I saw this imagery in full force as I was reading this poem, um, and it, it, it's about the the noxious weeds yes. that uh, that the 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 poem subject is is coming across. Um, that's part of this uh, river journey. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, just it's not it's you do refer to. Um, the wild strawberries of your past, mm -hmm. and um, contrasting it with with the the weeds as you're mm -hmm. going along the river, um, I found that contrast to be really effective in this poem. Oh yeah, a lot of people ha like have liked that poem. A lot of people have liked this book, but that um, that was actually one of those Mystic River Watershed Association organized um, trips mm -hmm. to pull water chestnuts, which is a, an invasive plant. It's not the kind of water chestnut you eat. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, one of those invasive plants that is rooted in the bottom and then has rather pretty um, foliage that completely covers the surface of the water and cuts off the oxygen. So it's you know, it's terrible for any f other form of life, and um, it's bad for the, the water quality of the river. Um, but they're ingeniously designed plants. <laughs> um, and they, they're, you know, they, they infest other, other rivers in Massachusetts, too. And DCR has bought a, some mechanical sort of dredging machines. But these these plants have evolved so cleverly um, that that they have these sharp thorny seed pods that when you pull the plant tend to fall off and go back in the mud oh. where they can last and last and produce new plants mm. and when you use the mechanical dredgers you only get about 50 percent of the seeds but hand pulling you can get 80 percent mm. and so um, the Watershed Association, which I just saw up on your other monitor there, <laughs> um, does such great work. They 
get people out on the river, volunteers, mm -hmm. you know, several weekends in the summer to do hand pulling. And this poem is actually about one of those trips. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a canoe with one of my daughters and you know, you, you carefully pull these things up. You wear gloves, although these sharp paws will pierce right through them. Mm. And they absolutely stink because when you, when you pull them up, they're covered with slime and they've cut off the oxygen to the water so the water smells like rotten eggs mm. and the plants do. And then you, you fill up your canoe until it starts to get unsteady unstead from the weight and then uh, take you know, take your load in, and they fill trucks with these things, and they have to grind it all up so, so the seed pods won't won't germinate. Mm. Amazing nuisance, but you got to keep the river healthy, yeah. right? Yeah. So that seems like more important work than, as you say, I contrast it with picking wild strawberries when I was a little thing, and there's <laughs> nothing more delicious and fragrant than wild strawberries. Right. right. So. And there this was coming are. at the end of the season again, right? Uh, collecting the noxious weeds. This was sometime in the summer. Sometime in the summer, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, strawberries, wild strawberries would, would come in June. Mm. Um, and I think it was about the same time of year. And it couldn't be more different. But I, I, I really enjoyed um, how you tied, like, cycles of nature and, and blooming and mm -hmm. harvest with um, seasons so that if the season is off for some reason it affects the plant cycle mm -hmm. and I've, I've seen that personally I as I was reading some of these poems I thought of like my failed tomatoes um, that happened one one year uh -huh. uh, they got a blight and so I didn't have yep. tomatoes that year and then thinking of um, uh, a late frost that prevented the magnolias from blooming which which um, I've seen in this area mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you, you were able to recall that imagery for me um, as I was reading your poems about tying the, the nature cycle to harvests and expectations. Yes, I, I, a few years ago, you might remember there, were, there was a hard frost in the spring after mm -hmm. the fruit trees yeah. had set their blossoms and there were virtually no apples and there were zero peaches. But there didn't used to be, it used to be impossible to grow peaches in New England. It was just too cold. But the, the USDA hardiness zone that we're in has changed, even in the 30 odd years since we've, we've owned a house, mm. which was the first time we could plant a garden that we knew would stay there or that we, you know, we would be around to, to enjoy. Um, so, you know, I, I took a quiz once that had all these, these questions in it, like what phase is the moon right in, now, in right now? What, um, what watershed do you live in? Mm -hmm. And, you know, just all these, these questions that referenced many different parts of, of, the, of the, the, the existing world, the unbuilt world. And I, I, I think I, I got a perfect score, and I thought, wow, you know, I've been living in the most densely populated city in the U.S. for, you know, all of my adult life, and I still notice the phases of the moon, and I, you know, I still have a sense of geography and plant life. You know, that's that's something to. That's something to use. That's something to be aware of, mm. um, because I think it's really easy to become denatured. Um, but I, nature intelligence is a really valuable thing to have. Mm. Yeah, and and your sensitivity to all that comes through radiates uh, with this book. Um, where can people find a copy of this book? Ah. Um, I would encourage people to encourage Porter Square Books to keep stocking it because it, it's always selling out and they're always not restocking. <laughs> I did a reading there last month 
every book they had sold. <laughs> um, it can, you can buy it online. Um, Lulu is the, the distributor for Ibbotson Street Press, which is here in Somerville. So, um, you know, the Somerville, the Somerville publisher gets a, a better deal with Lulu purchases. The other thing I discovered is Lulu will ship abroad, whereas Amazon in the US is separate from, say, Amazon Great Britain. Mm -hmm. So if you buy through Amazon US to ship abroad, that won't work. Oh. Um, and Amazon UK doesn't have it. But Amazon US does. Um, and where else? There's there's a circulating copy in the Somerville Public Library. It's in a lot of other collections. I don't know if the Grolier still has it. Um, I hope so. Um, so it looks like there's a good opportunity for uh, for people to to get out there and find this locally. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so with the the remaining time that we have, I was wondering if you would. Um, Read a poem from. Oh, sure. Every... Oh, sure. Someday I'll recite them all, but <laughs> um, if I get a, a word off, I'll get the rhythm off. I'll read this one because we, we are here. This is the time. November song. The trees are taking off their leaves. I layer on more clothes, but feel they barely cover me when the naked west wind blows. The dark is coming early now, while morning rises late. These short days we inhabit are cluttered with constraint. Our garden is a frowsy place, bereft of bloom or fruit. Autumn has spent all its gold and leaves us destitute. Very appropriate. Well, I, that's, that, that's how the poems come. That's the yeah. process. It all speaks to me. Well, thank you very much for coming and, and speaking with me, Denise Provost.